Okay, to talk, I've spoken in the first part of the discussion about the grammar of drawing, the grammar of the physical activity of making a drawing. And a drawing, as we've seen, is essentially a static, it's made on a sheet of paper and it's there. Its quality is that it remains. I leave the room and what I've made stays behind. So it's a way of defying time, of holding time, of resisting time. If I'm over here and I walk away, then there's a sense I've disappeared. But if I've made a drawing and I walk away, the drawing remains and flies in the face of time. As time passes, the drawing is still there. So that's one kind of activity. But when one looks at the world, and when I looked at the world, particularly in South Africa when I was growing up, the world did not seem static. The world was not like a drawing. The world was not a fact. The world was something that was changing, was in process the whole time. And I think one of the reasons I started making animated films in the mid-1980s was because the very stillness of a drawing seemed to me an inadequate way of really making a reference to the changeable nature of the world, the world as being in movement and changing. So I started a technique of making animated films which came out of making charcoal drawings. It started when I would originally had an empty sheet of paper and I put a camera on the empty sheet of paper and I made a mark and filmed that mark and then made another mark and then kept on adding marks to the sheet of paper, filming them all the time so that when it was finished what you saw was a drawing coming into being. So you saw the drawing literally pulling itself up onto the surface. And the, I made this out of charcoal because I was already making charcoal drawings. So the charcoals were a given. To explain to you, of course, the nature of animation very briefly, if you make a mark and film it, and then make another, and then erase this mark, and draw it over there, and film it, and then erase that mark and draw it over there and then over there and over there and over there. Then what you have is not a series of still marks but an illusion and of course it's only an illusion that this line is actually moving. And in the same way that we have to do the work to recognize the face that is pre present here, we have to do the work of imagining that line as moving. What the brain is receiving are a series of static images and what we do is give the illusion of movement to those series of static images. And one of the things I was interested in animation as with drawing was making us conscious of that process of looking, of what we do when we see. So. That's to give an example of one of the kinds of animated films that I make. In other words, they don't, they don't start with a script or a storyboard. They end with a story that is there, they end with a completed film, but they start with shapes, with an image, with a sense of wanting to draw the sea, with wanting to put Soho in a deck chair, but without knowing what that will mean in the end or what that will add up to. So the film would start somewhere in the mini middle, um, although in this case I think I started by trying to draw the sea. Um, and gradually as the film is made over many months, different elements come together. So people who started off as side characters, as unimportant characters, the woman, the nanny, the maid in her white gown, suddenly becomes important. The children playing in the waves suddenly become the younger self of Soho. And this becomes a kind of an, an element also of recognition in the same way that one recognizes the tree or the face or the rhinoceros. One is reliant on recognizing the possible stories that come together. And I'll show you some of the raw material that was used in making the... Sound is not important. So when I knew I was working on the film, there's a sense of gathering all the material, trying in this case to understand the grammar of a deck chair. How does a deck chair move so that one can get the deck chair to do a kind of 
to do a kind of dance. So in that part, it's very much doing research, finding, collecting the images that are, that are needed. Again, finding the reference to the cows that were going to be in. So this was on my brother-in-law's farm when I was there. I knew in South Africa we often have cows on the beach. It's a hotel that was in this part of Cape Town in the years when my father used to go to Cape Town for his school holidays. So I realized while drawing that a lot of the film has to do with parental history. It has to do with my grandfather, with my father, and with myself and with my son. So in fact there are four generations that go through the drawing of the film. This was my son when he was much younger helping me do that section of the film. Of Okay, so that's to, again, just to show you part of the process of arriving at the film would have been taking these different fragments and elements. And the films are usually between six and eight minutes long because it takes so many months to do them, even at that length, that to think of doing a longer feature film would be years and years. There's also a sense in which the films are not about the psychology of the characters. The characters are rather like commedia dell'arte actors or actors in a traditional play in which the same characters will always appear, but will perform different roles as they're called on in the different films. So Soho is there because I want to think about different generations or about the passage of time or the passage of the waves breaking. So I think that's enough of an introduction to the kind of animation that I make.